Hello again. I have been kidnapped and I've been told that I have to watch another video since everyone seemed to love the last one. This is Tari, aka Tara, Bernard's fiance, and here comes the torture. I'm gonna apparently learn about all the space marines in a nutshell. I don't wanna brag, but I think I know a little bit about each legion, but we'll see. Here we go. To the people on the internet, the time has come. The, the reckoning, reckoning begins. begins. Your boy got himself a shaker cup. <laughs> After many, many months of shilling gamersups like mad, my favorite thing to do, we have ourselves a goddamn shaker cup. It's here, the official Bricky Waifu Shaker Cup. Do you see the gal on here? If it's, if it's not great at focusing, I'm sure there'll be a thing in the background. The skater, put a thing in the background. Long white hair, absolutely. A bit more toned, abs, obviously. Bikini, hit it. Legally distinct mark on the face, of course. She wants you to do the diddle thing, maybe, but most likely to serve in a glorious army. Legally distinct? I think so. The Bricky Shaker Cup is available now and you should get it while it is hot. But if you're thinking, Bricky, what should I put in this? Well, how about my top 10 favorite gamer subs flavors from number one to number 10, all of them incredible, but listed. I'm sorry. First of all, you know, you've made it when you get your own shaker cup. Secondly, guacamole gamer fart 9,000. <laughs> like. I, I, I don't even want to know. Like, first of all, I wasn't expecting this, like, infomercial, but I also like how it said we'll ship 12 to 16 weeks after you pre-order. Like, I'm not waiting that fucking long for it. Anyway, do your thing, man. Do your thing. Your hustle gotta respect regardless and an addendum for those that are caffeine free this shaker cup is available now in the description of this video you may use code bricky as well at checkout to get a discount on your order a massive amount of profits goes to yours truly and a huge thank you to gamer subs for sponsoring and for getting me this beautiful beautiful cup go out there and get it I'm going to take one more sip for the camera, slow it down, throw some sexy music in there, and I'll see you guys soon. I just want to know what he's drinking. <sighs> Hello, everybody. My name is Bricky, currently stuck in the walls of the most prodigious school in the Imperium by punishment for falling asleep during class. God bless the Skull of Progenium. Many of you have come across my Every Faction Explained video. Firstly, thank you. Secondly, we are here to dig a little deeper. Space Marines are the quintessential poster boys of Warhammer 40,000. When people think 40K, they think Space Marines, but there are many types of Space Marines formed from 20 separate legions. We are going to rattle them off in order and give you a quick rundown of each one. A disclaimer, like in my Every Faction Explained video, this is a mix of accuracy and memes. If I say the Salamander's Legion specializes in hugging children and petting puppies, they aren't exactly doing that, mostly. I would like to pet this creature. But you can infer <laughs> that they care about civilians and are a bit kinder than the average space marine. A space marine being a genetically modified super soldier that's had a million new and terrifying organs shoved into them, refrigerators strapped to their bodies, and are so far above the average human that they are referred to as demigods instead. Each space marine has a father, unlike you, a primarch, <laughs> which is basically an even bigger space marine that was forged in a lab by the god emperor of mankind that gigantic golden dude you see everywhere who is both the leader and now the martyr of humanity the primarchs are his 20 sons built in a lab who lead 20 legions of space marines who are their sons not from a lab but rather a dissection table giving them the powers and skills of their associated primarch via a gene seed a special organ carrying the genetic makeup of their primarch and you know their seed. So if Jack is on the <laughs> I knew White he was Scar, has something. the genetic makeup that wants him to go really, really fast, then his sons, the Space Marines, 
also want to go really, really fast. I should note that I am only referring to the legions this time around. If you're interested in sub factions, like let's say the Black Templars, then it's not going to be here. However, I do have a excellent Black Templar video. I'd argue it's probably the most accurate one I can think of. It goes through the whole lore, everything about them. It's a very long video and I'll put it in the description. Just look up Black Templar video in the description. You'll get what you need. And now with the easy explanation out of the way, let us begin with our first legion dark angels allegiance loyal okay so when we say loyal are we talking about sucking up to the god emperor and doing the wrong thing are we talking about pursuing truth and saying screw you to your dad who neglected you like, what is loyal? What is loyal? Think about it. Primark Lion L. Johnson, a duelist, a knight, knight, a real asshole, I'm not gonna lie. The single word descriptor, paranoid. The Dark Angels are our first legion, hailing from the death world known as Calabam. <laughs> Their Primarch, Lion L. Johnson, is what happens when you try to make the side profile Chad meme into a genuine character. He okay. is a master tier duelist, a brilliant strategist, and an overall dick. There are few situations he isn't prepared for, and few fights he isn't ready to lead head on. This makes the Dark Angels have a very Knights of the Round Table vibe. They look like the Knights of Old with these large suits of power armor, often donning robes and hoods. Their names also follow this. They have like Ezekiel, Azrael, Belial, Samuel and so on. However, the common thing associated with Dark Angels are the Fallen, a part of their faction that turned traitor against the Imperium, and they are very heavily trying to expunge all knowledge of them from existence. Fallen? What Fallen? Never heard of any Fallen. Do you know about the Fallen? We're going to take you away and mind probe you to make sure you have never heard of the Fallen. They definitely don't exist. And if they do exist, which they don't, we will find them even though they don't exist. They love their interrogations. They thrive in it. Lionel Johnson is a scorched earth policy sometimes, and it's given to his sons in force, which makes sense considering that when the Lion heard of a Chaos Primarch on a homeworld different Primarch, whose mom was there, he was like... Let's nuke it. The Dark Angels are a special group where they formulate themselves into three different factions. The Deathwing Terminators, slow moving, tough phalanx. The Raven Wing, fast jet bikes and flyers. And the Green Wing, which is your standard Marines. They are a jack of all trades, but not in the same- <laughs> <laughs> Have you told them about- <laughs> Story time. When we lived, lived in Oregon, oh, I'm still wearing my mask. Look at that. I just got home from work. That's why. When we lived in Oregon, um, Bernard had just moved to Oregon and we had just gotten an apartment together. And I have an adorable yet stubborn Pembroke Welsh Corgi. And no one told Bernard to do this, but he decided to anyway. He had just finished painting them, painting them or whatever. And he put them on a cardboard box on the floor in the second bedroom, which was designated as the hobby computer room. And we went out. I don't even remember what we did, but we went out and Panini's good by herself. And so we come home and Panini greets us at the door as usual. And I go upstairs and I always checked every room to make sure she didn't have any accidents and she didn't. But I went into the second bedroom and all of the Raven Wing pretty much destroyed. <laughs> like they were just in pieces on the ground. And I was just like, oh my God. And Bernard was like, what's wrong? <laughs> I've never seen him look so angry in my life. I had to like grab Panini and hold her away from him because I was pretty sure that she was gonna die. But that's how I remember the Raven Wing. They were destroyed by a Corgi sense where they're good at everything but rather they have a lot of things that are good at specific things like instead of 20 people that have a multi-tool they instead have 20 people with gigantic power tools for every job imaginable if you like being suspicious about everyone and everything in your surroundings but you also like to have a whole lot of deep night type lore run the dark angels the one piece the one piece is real our second legion <laughs> is a special one <laughs> If you can see, yeah, the numbers all go to 11. The Emperor's Children, Allegiance, Traitor, Primarch, 
Fulgrim, a perfectionist, an artist, a sneaky snaky snake, and the single word descriptor, perfection. The Emperor's children are all about the pursuit of perfection. Perfection in all they do. Perfection in war, in artistry, and perfection in every other aspect of life. Their armor is a gleaming pink, purple, and gold. Their ships have spires of gorgeous marble and gold statues in their honor. Fulgrim is a man who believes the pursuit of perfection is the goal of all things, and I mean, look at him! Can you truly tell me that he is not perfect? The hair, the features. As Primarchs go, he is the the one you look at and if 40k had a guy that would give you the best sex you've ever had and never call you back this is the fucking guy which is why this pursuit of decadence led them to the evils of chaos yes emperor's children are our first chaos legion and not just a normal one one devoted to you guessed it slanesh the prince of pleasure god of unspeakable excess the emperor's children in their pursuit are now horrifyingly mutated beings through slanesh's great will they torture and maim to feel perfection through pain they screech and attack with sonic weaponry for perfection through sound and they slaughter aiming for perfection in war fulgrim himself lost the battle against Slanesh as a demon sword corrupted his mind and transformed him into the sexy man he was, into the sexy snake he is now. A demon Primarch corrupted and bringing his legion's will by himself. As far as Emperor's children go, they are some bad people. They do horrible, horrible things to anyone and everything. In fact, they're such trolls that their battle cry is for the Emperor, despite being horribly mutated and corrupted. If you've ever taken a little too much of a drug, or or maybe the music at the concert was too loud and you didn't bring any earplugs, or whatever the reason, you just take all those things and you dial it, and you dial it, and you twisted and the knob breaks and that is the emperor's children god is dead god we mean dead and we have killed him the iron warriors allegiance traitor primarch percherabo a warlord a siege smith an incel single word descriptor <laughs> Siege. <laughs> Continuing the trend of our Chaos Legions, we have the Iron Warriors led by Primarch Percherabo of Olympia. To understand the Iron Warriors, though, one must first understand Percherabo. A man so bitter, coffee beans run for light. A man who hates the world and everyone in it. Who never got recognition for his deeds. Who hates his brothers and hates their accomplishments even more. Someone so laughably petty, so incredibly bitter, that he goes full circle to becoming likable. Why? Because he's competent. The Horus Heresy, we didn't talk about the Horus Heresy. Intermission. <laughs> so Horus was the Emperor's favorite son, right? You know, yeah. so the Emperor walked into his room. Horus said, Dad, Dad, I just gifted 150 subs to Amaranth, and she said my name a ton, and she loved me for it. I really think that I might get to meet her one day. And it kind of played out something like this. Your feelings for her are not real. They are real to me! And then it started playing out a little bit more like this. Let the seas boil. Let the stars fall. So it takes the last drop of my blood. Yeah. So Iron Warriors, the whole <laughs> heresy wouldn't have gotten shit done without Peter Turbo. Imagine an entire faction that is the personification of brutal industrialism, where you serve the Legion until your dying breath. You build and you kill and you siege and you kill and you literally summon demons just to take them and trap them in machines and use them as cannon fodder. This is a thing they do. They summon demons <laughs> to Thomas trap to take and it? use as shock troops. The Iron Warriors are siege warfare incarnate. They are heavy weapons they are tanks they are turrets and they don't die they hate imperials they hate imperial fists do you need a pacifier iron baby no no i don't they are bitter <laughs> incarnate percherabo and the iron warriors don't serve the chaos gods because they like them they serve them because fuck you come on guys let's go not another speeding ticket i'll fight it in court but i don't think they're gonna accept gotta go fast as a medical condition the white scars allegiance loyalist primark jagatai khan a speed demon a plane strider a roast god single word descriptor 
speed hailing from chagoras the white scars are all about speed they love melee but they love it even more when they are doing it from a motorcycle or land speeder or honestly just running really damn fast the white scars are honestly forgotten about a lot and that's lore accurate they are a legion that doesn't seek the recognition or glory from the combat they engage in they engage in it because it is their duty and because they love it not in the insane slaughter enjoyment of loving it but in the thrill of the fight they are known as the laughing killers because they ride into battle with a smile on their face and a chuckle in their throat and as you can tell by their primarch's name they are mongolian based move horses and replace them with motorcycles and land spears and that's your style they are heavily based on the old times of genghis khan and consider this is 40k and everybody's evil now that fits the white scars are actually physical scars on their body going back to their heritage on Chagoras. the khan himself is kind of a dickhead but but a reasonable one he thinks ahead he's intelligent he's patient he is often underestimated because he doesn't scream his accomplishments from the rooftops which is what makes him and the white scars dangerous his skills are kept at bay only to be truly shown when the time is needed the white scars are a forgotten legion often but that doesn't diminish their accomplishments all it does is surprise those who underestimate them. Speed, awesome Mongolian vibe they got going on. And if you really like to stab people, that's the white scars for you. Shameless thirst break. Oh. This is dog. Woof, 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 woof. I think, I forget which book it was. That was my first introduction to Warhammer the novels it was a book about the space can't remember is that the one with loken loken does that sound right i just remember there was a story about a guy and it was like from beginning to end because their world is fenris right i just i don't what was his name maybe it started with an r yes wow rag like the most norse name and i couldn't remember it um yeah that was my first ever novel that i read and literally, it was because I had to go to the bathroom and I had no reading material. <laughs> That's how I got it. I was just like, what is this shit about? He's always reading this crap. And then I started reading and I was like, oh, okay, this is an interesting story. But yeah, um, the White Scars, don't know much about them. Just know that the leader is one goal. So here's a question I'm not 100% sure on. Maybe you can answer it. When they were shipped off to the different corners of the universe, did they have preset characteristics or did they develop them? So, for example, Khan, when he was sent to Mongolian world, did he become Mongolian or was he Mongolian when he was sent? Because then that to me is like, this was planned, bro. Yes, I get it. But then why would you? Okay, okay. You got to think about it. Yeah, this is like the long con, right? So Bernard was telling me that in the lore, they just found out about the mom and she's a perpetual, right? Whatever. So here's the question. How did they know that each kid would have a characteristic and then they would send that kid to a specific planet? Why, why would you specifically be like, okay, one kid's gonna be Mongolian and one kid's gonna have dark skin and one kid's gonna have wings? Like, why would you do that? So he knew that there was a planet out there with Mongolian people. See, all of this is just making me remember how much he sucks. He's a terrible father. Like you should take him to paternity court. I think you should take him to paternity court and be like, dad, you're terrible. You never loved me. And I'm gonna go start a new family with this woman. Pause. <laughs> Pause what? <laughs> Bro. Wolf, bitch. The Space Wolves. Allegiance, loyalist. Primarch? Lehman Russ, a Viking, a savage, the Undertaker. Single word descriptor, wolf, 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 wolf. There's so many goddamn wolf units. Skater, how many units in the Space Wolf Codex have the word wolf in their name? The Space Wolves are the sixth legion and hail from Fenris, a frozen wasteland of a world with their Primarch, Lehman Russ. I don't really need to spend a whole lot of time talking about the Space Wolves because it's very obvious who they are. They are the second most 
like obvious what their shtick is legion in the 20 legions besides the world eaters when you look at the space wolves behind what do you see do you see vikings in space you've done it congratulations you have found vikings in space but they have as much in common with a regular marine as an old day viking with, with like a roman soldier you see as a space marine your body is so enhanced that you filter out poison and so you can't get drunk the space wolves distill a special mead out of a horrible poisonous plant that would kill a normal human so they could get drunk they have fangs in their mouths they sometimes cannibalize their enemies yeah, yeah they, sometimes they eat people because they gain knowledge about them from there and about battle plans I didn't know that. They cannibalize enemies? Where was that written? I don't remember that. I don't remember Lorgar being like... Not Lorgar. Sorry. I'm sorry, Lorgar. I love you. Um, Ragnar. Ragnar did it all the time. I don't remember him doing it in the book. Ragnar would be like, let me get some brains. I don't remember that. The Space Wolves are savages, they're raiders, they're Vikings, but despite all of this, they are loyal to their core. Lehman Russ is an egotistical guy who just shouts stories and tales of his accomplishments everywhere they can. But at the same time, he was so damn loyal that instead of gunning down his foes, he hit him with a fucking backbreaker to show his devotion, his devotion to wrestling. If you want Vikings in space, you found it. Play the Vikings in space. We're going to build the wall. We have no choice. We have no choice. Build that wall. Build that wall. Build that wall. The Imperial Fists. Allegiance? Loyalist. Primark? Rogel Dorn. A builder, a phalanx, and he needs a hand. Single word descriptor. <laughs> Fortify. The Imperial Fists are led by Primarch Rogel Dorn in their homeworld of Inuit. Was Rogel Dorn the one that was doing the siege or protecting against the siege? I listen. However, they themselves are actually. But I bet if I asked him anything about what I like, he's just like. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. actually a fleet-based chapter with their main source of recruitment coming from an enormous moon-sized ship called the phalanx the fists are a chapter you think of when you think of duty they love to serve the love to serve and the inability to be moved rogel dorn is an architect a master builder and basically a rock in brain and body a lack of humor or ability to lie shows that he is as blunt as the weapons of war he creates not the swords he makes but like blunt strong weapons the fists are the same take your archetypical american marine style look a buzz cut a hard sense of duty and then throw in some power armor and a love for building defenses and you have the imperial fists they are immovable when you find a spot they're ready to defend you you can't breach them their knowledge of defensive warfare is paramount without them the Horus heresy would have been so much more effective but thanks to their insane and immovable tenacity the imperium lives today and let's not forget that iron warrior and imperial fist rivalry want to know why the iron warriors are so bitter these guys are the reason why hey guys bring the thing where is he going could have killed me hey guys we missed get another dorn and perturado <laughs> are basically two sides of the same coin one is just a bit more level-headed and got better jobs if you want to be def i need to go back i didn't understand we missed. what i just saw get another dorn and per okay cannot grow facial hair jealous of his brothers for being better than him betrayed the emperor because he wasn't getting enough attention that's why they all betrayed him oh why doesn't anyone understand the emperor was a terrible person um rules through i can't see what that says wears i don't know what that is uses mutton chops to intimidate seals okay Something the real Alpharius and killed him? What did he do to the real Alpharius? He killed Alpharius. The real one? Yeah. How did he get the real one? Dude infiltrated the Imperial Palace. Got caught by Rogel Dorn and they had a one on one fight with Rogel Dorn. You badass. Now, do we know it was the real Alpharius? Or is it kind of. 
like it is very heavily suggested wow. that it is out there. So he Hilariously, gets though, and... he did not know he himself was Alpharius during most of the book. I don't understand. Wait, I think I read some of that. But I think I got so out, like, I did not care. Like, I literally was just like, okay, that was boring. And I didn't read it. I, I forget which Legion, him and, what's his brother's name? Omega Ryan or something. Oh, <laughs> Alpharius and... Oh there you go. Oh my god. I'm sorry. I think Omega Ryan is better. But... <laughs> oh. I just didn't care. I was like, okay, cool. You guys are spies and ninjas, whatever. But they weren't interesting. I was just like, uh, I don't care. <laughs> like, you're not cool to me. But I hope I didn't offend anyone. Her Chirabo are basically two sides of the same coin. One is just a bit more level-headed and got better jobs. If you want to be defensive, to be good at everything space marines are good at, bolters, heavy weapons, vehicles, you want a classic military fighting force, start fisting I am having so here's the thing from what I've heard read been told the emperor wanted his legions to go out and like you know save mankind retake shit all that good stuff why the hell would someone who's focused on defense be that great do I understand about the whole siege of Terra yeah we want a guy who can you know erect defenses but I, I know they know how to fight, but I'm just like, why would I give you credit for anything else? Like, I'm not asking you to, like, hold out during an enemy siege. Like, oh, look, I'm at this planet. All right, let me just build a wall. Oh, no one can get through. Like, what's... So after they would conquer a world, mm -hmm. his legion had the responsibility of fortifying that world before they left. So you're just building walls and then leaving? Well... Not just building walls, but training forces. And building walls. Building walls is a part of it. Okay. I'm sorry. I'm not... Creating infrastructure. I'm not that impressed. I actually didn't know they existed until Bernard told me about the whole, ooh, siege of terror. And I was like, oh, wow, okay. This guy, like, defended the planet? That's awesome. But before that, I was just like, who the hell is he? Like, they would mention him in other books, and I'm like, who is Roggle Roggle? Like, that's... that's, that's <laughs> That's that's how I remembered his name. Okay, so every Primark, before I became more familiar with their names, I gave them little nicknames, okay? All right, so there you go. Now you know the story. For the rest of the video, you have to tell everybody <laughs> what the nicknames are. Having okay. a very bad day. This, today, is one of the worst days. Oh, boy. Oh boy, here we go. The Night Lords. Allegiance, heretic. Primarch, Conrad Kurz. A sadist, a vigilante, depresso espresso. Single word. Conrad Kurz, I called him Connor. That, that's what helped me remember his name. Sorry. Fear. The Night Lords are my favorite legion, hailing from the Stromo and their Primarch, Conrad Kurz. They are a traitor legion from a planet known as the Sunless World or the World of Endless Night. Nostromo is a horrible hive city that is known for being host to some of the worst gang violence, murder, and working conditions around. So, it's Detroit. <laughs> like, he was just like, it is home to the most gang violence or whatever. And I was just like, so is this. Is his own planet Detroit <laughs> or Compton? I don't know, like Chicago. <laughs> like, is that is that where he's from? Is he from Detroit? Is Connor from Detroit? The only thing keeping the population in check is the suicide rate. The Night Lords followed in the footsteps of their Primarch, a man who believed in a twisted sense of justice and that the only way to make humans compliant is through fear. The Legion's lesson has been lost on them, as their ranks were repopulated by gang members, murderers, arsonists, torturers, and other words I can't say on YouTube, as young as 12 years old. Murderers before they were even teenagers, raised to become demigods. Now fear is what they sow, and flesh is what they reap. The Night Lords are 
scum. They are the exact opposite of all other legions. They torture and they maim and they flay because they think it's fun. They run away often so they can come back and kill you with more numbers. They prey on the innocent and the weak. They kill normal civilians because it's easy and flee any battle where they don't possess overwhelming odds. They are the antithesis of normal space marines. They are scum. One Wait, where they don't possess overwhelming odds or when they're not against overwhelming odds? Never mind, I can't. Oh, that's right, you can't, sorry. <laughs> the way, the way things work. No, he says that they flee from battle when they don't possess overwhelming odds. Yeah, so they don't have the advantage. They're like, you're not doing that with overwhelming They only pick points. They like, my brain is just playing with the grammar. It doesn't like it. Anyway. One time, a world did not comply to their demands, so they raided one of their ships and brought it into atmosphere. The crowds cheered and clapped as it appears that they had won the battle, and the airlocks opened, and the skinned and flayed bodies of the crew were thrown down in the populace. In other words, a legion of gangers and criminals. Add together a heavy Slavic influence to them, You've got my favorite faction. You have not done the dishes. So what does that say about him if the Night Lords are his favorite? Deep down, is he from Detroit? Is he just like, yeah, gangbanger, gonna kill some people? Or maybe he likes the pie mark who was literally 40k back. Or maybe he's a coward. Are you calling him out? Calling you out. What's his name again? Brixby? Brixy? Brickley? Brick. <laughs> Sorry. No offense. For five years. So embarrassed when people come over here. What does it matter? You bring them over, you kill them. Vampires don't do dishes. The Blood Angels. Allegiance? Loyal. Primarch? Sanguinius, an angel, a vampire, a dead ass oh. motherfucker. Single word descriptor? Blood. The Blood Angels are Ninth Legion, hailing from the homeworld of Baal, with their Primarch, Sanguinius. The Blood Angels are a tragic tale, with one of the best Primarchs, one beloved by almost everybody. A genuine, angelic figure who led his people to glory, killed by the hands of the traitor Horus before the Emperor's eye. Killed by the traitor Horus. Sounds like you're putting a lot of labels out there. Killed by the amazing forward-thinking Horus? Yes, I would agree with that. But maybe he had it coming. We don't know what happened behind the scenes. Maybe Sanguinius always stole his cupcakes. And then obviously he couldn't have been that great if he got killed. The death of their Primarch led the entire Legion to madness as their gene seed malfunctioned and created something known as the Black Rage. The Blood Angels degrade over time, experiencing something called the Red Thirst, which gives them a genuine vampiric thirst for blood. As their minds degrade and break down, they get angrier and angrier, becoming berserk killing machines with no other goal than to tear everything in sight apart. But they don't see it as that. They see themselves there, at their Primarch's demise, with Horus in sight. And to them, it's time for vengeance. That space marine over there, that chaos space marine, that's Horus. Kill him. That orc war boss over there, Horus. Kill him. That Tyranid swarm, 1,000 Horuses. Horai. Kill them all. Did your toast come out a little bit burnt? Horus sabotaged your toaster. Destroy the toaster. Destroy it. Do it. Do it. Kill your toaster. Do it. This slow, debilitating disease takes over the blood angels and it gives them this angelic, vampire, and Catholic inspired imagery. They have chalices of blood. They rest in coffins and can even use psychic powers to sprout angel wings from their bodies. They are a tragedy through and through, and the only thing that will look more tragic are the mangled bodies of those they come in contact with. I got a diesel engine. And honey, we forgot to mention, we're gonna take your job away. The Iron Hands. Allegiance, loyalist. Primarch, Ferris Manus, a machinist and inventor. Ferris Manus. So. Oh no, I went back to the beginning. <laughs> Ferris Manus. 
used to call him Fenrir. Do you want to fight me about it? Because that's literally what I used to call him. Manus, a machinist, an inventor, and not a great head on his shoulders. Single word? Bionics. Bionic! Oh! The Iron Hands are from the home planet of Medusa and their Primarch, Ferris Manus. Does Ferris Manus have an iron hand? You fucking know he's got an iron hand. The Iron Hands believe that the flesh is weakness. But despite all of their enhancements, despite all the things that made them demigods, replacing some of the flesh with bionics will allow them to serve the Emperor more. They go harm into vehicles and dreadnoughts. Dreadnoughts being giant walking sarcophagi that have wounded... I don't know what it is, but ever since Bernard made me read these books, I have been in love with Dreadnoughts. And I am waiting for the day that someone writes a novel dedicated to a Dreadnought. I just want an entire novel that starts from beginning to end about a Marine who gets fucked up on the battlefield and they're like, yo, bro, you want to go in the sarcophagus? And he's like, yeah, bro, gotta keep safe, like serving the Emperor or whatever. And they put him in and then it goes through the whole... He gets thrown out on the field, he does his job, and then he's just like, let me sleep, and then they put him to sleep, and then they wake him back up. I want a novel like that. Bernard has said that maybe I should write it. I don't think that's a good idea. I don't. But is am I the only person who's like, I want to see what a life as a dreadnought is like? I, I think I read one book where there was a dreadnought, and they woke it up, and it was walking around doing stuff. I think it ended up getting fucked up. What book was that? That had to do with the guy from Horace's thing. And they bombed the planet he was on. This one? Yeah. What's it? Yeah, the Loken. They're all the same. Loken, Lorgar, Ragnar. I shouldn't say that. Lorgar, no one can touch Lorgar. But in that book, wasn't there a Dreadnought? And he got fucked up. Yeah, I think that was the only time I've actually read about a dreadnought. And I got really, really excited. And I was like, okay, yes, they're going to do something. And then he was just like, eh. And he like died. <laughs> I don't remember if he got bombed or something. But I just, I remember reading something about a dreadnought. It was fighting alongside the main character. I really feel like it was about that. It was that guy, Loken, and... I remember hating Loken. His character annoyed me. He was like a goody two-shoes. Like that kid on the playground that was always like, Teacher! So-and-so! Like, that's kind of what he gave me. Am I wrong? Wasn't he like that? Wasn't he specifically put in the group to be that voice of dissension? Wasn't that his job? Like, he was literally supposed to be there and whine and be annoying and he, he served his job well. I wanted to kill him myself. I would kill the entire planet just to kill him. It was very annoying. Space Marines piloting them from the inside. Vehicles, metal upgrades. These are the things that make up this legion. Their tech marines have servo arms sticking out from all directions. They have a wide array of mechanics and extremely often replace limbs with metal ones, serving all kinds of different functions to deal with their enemies. The Iron Hands are also not particularly nice. Uh, they're kind of assholes. I mean, marines are already normally pretty big assholes, but, but they, they're a little bit up there because of their... Ugh, flesh, ugh, civilians made of flesh, ugh, ugh. Because you see, the flesh is weak. Flesh is corruptible. Bionics, the strength of the machine is pure and cannot so easily be corrupted. So if you want people who have this little techno-fetishistic vibe to them that love their vehicles and their walking coffins, hit up the Iron Hands. You understand? All right, I'm gonna stop it there. That is part one of Tara's reactions to Ricky. I, I really want to say Brixie. Maybe he should change his name. Brixie kind of has more of a better ring to it. Anyway, first review or first part of my review of the Legions. This is actually really good and informative. It's kind of like filling in some holes that I never thought I had. Like not saying that I'm an expert at this stuff. I just... But I kind of knew the basics, but stuff like the name of the planet and what their characteristics are, like, 
I didn't ever go into that much detail. So I really, really like it. I'm enjoying it so far. So stay tuned. Second part should be coming out soon as well. Bye.